Hi everyone, Grant K here from the Smoke Learning Channel. In the Action 3D Compositor, there are so many ways to move and animate your objects in 3D space. Today's video, we're going to be concentrating on the 3D Path tool. Now this node can be connected to any node within your composite, which will allow it to move any objects along a 3D path that you can see and manipulate inside the 3D space. The 3D Path tool is located in the Action Node bin, and you would add it to the composite like any other tool. To create a 3D Path, double-click on the 3D Path rather than drag it up into the view. The reason I say this is that the cursor goes into Create mode as soon as I double-click the 3D Path node. Click and release the cursor to create a control point and you can continue to do this while creating the shape of your path. So here I have created a design, but I have two choices now. I can close the shape by clicking on the first control point, or I can switch to the object menu and click Finish, located under the Path menu options. Once the shape is created, we can still manipulate the shape. You can select the control points in the viewer and move them, but if I open up the cursor pop-up menu, you could add points, delete points, and break the tangents if you want. Now this shape exists in 3D space. To show this, I'll select the schematic view and press the Shift-4 keyboard shortcut to display the top view. Using the navigation controls to the right of the interface, I'll zoom the view out so we can see the path and the camera from the top. In the result view, I can hold down the control shortcut key on the keyboard and click and drag a box over the bottom control points to select them. You can move them in the viewers or adjust the vertices sliders in the path menu. I'll move them away from the camera. Similarly, I'll select the top control points and move them closer to the camera. So if I grab the camera in the top view and start moving it around the path, you will see that it does in fact exist in true 3D space. I'll just press undo or command Z to undo the camera move. Now that we have the 3D motion path, we can attach it to whatever you like. For example, I'll switch back to the schematic view in the right view by pressing the Escape keyboard shortcut, and I'll switch back to the Node Bin menu. Underneath the 3D Path node, I'll double-click on the 3D Text node to add 3D text into the scene. Double-clicking on the Geom node in the schematic will bring up its properties in the Object menu. I'll click the text box and change the text to I love 3D Paths. I'll scale the text to about 200, the kerning to about 150, and the depth to 20. At this moment, the text has no relationship to the 3D path. To place the text on the 3D path, you would go to the schematic and drag a connection from the 3D path node to the axis of the 3D text. As soon as you perform this operation, the text sits on the path. As a matter of fact, just about any object can be connected to the 3D path. This includes layers, lights, 3D models, and cameras. I'll select the 3D path node in the schematic, and in the object menu, we will find a slider called Offset. If you were to slide this value up and down, you will see the text move along the path in 3D space. So with Auto key turned on, I'll go to frame 1 and set the offset value. Then, at the end of the composition, I'll set another offset value. Scrubbing the time bar shows the animation we've just created. Going back to frame 1, I'll switch the schematic back to the top view by changing the pop-up option at the bottom left of the interface to show the top view. I'll grab the camera and position it to one side of the path. Going to the end of the composition, I'll animate the camera to the other side of the 3D path. 
Scrubbing the time bar now shows a combination of the 3D path and camera animation. It's really quick and easy for motion graphic design. Now before I run out of time, I'll select the 3D path in the result view and show you a few more quick options. Next to the position offset slider are the alignment and orientation controls for the objects on the path. The default behavior is to align the object to the path. This will align it to the x-axis, hence the alignment that we have on our text. Switching the orientation pop-up button will give you different results depending on what you want. Now you could turn alignment off, and scrubbing the time bar will show the text moving on the path, but it is not aligning to the path. And finally, one of my favorites, you can switch the alignment to the look at an object. For example, I'll switch to the node bin menu and add a light into the composite from the action node bin. I'll switch the top view back to the schematic view with the escape keyboard shortcut. To make any object look at the light, you can click on the cursor pop-up button on the right of the interface and scroll to the look at function. Now in the schematic view, drag a connection from the 3D path node to the light node. Double clicking on the 3D path node, the object menu will appear and you can switch the orientation to point Z axis. I'll select the light in the result view and pull it back towards the camera using its Z position. Switching the schematic back to the top view, you can grab the light and move it around and all the objects will keep facing it as it moves in the scene. A final word. Remember that you can animate the control points on the path as well as animate the entire shape of the path using the axis node. If you want to know any more information about Autodesk Smoke, or you'd like to download the free 30-day trial copy, just go to autodesk.com forward slash smoke for Mac. Thank you.